hello welcome to anus classroom we are continuing our discussion on mmpc 15 and today we will be talking about statistical analysis and interpretation of data so we will touch upon um, concepts like one sample test two sample tests and even k sample test so these uh, sessions are just providing uh, a guideline to you guys in just you know breaking the ice and letting you familiarize with the concepts as is um, so let us start our discussion on one sample test so when you hear the name one sample test what comes into your mind so definitely i'm sure one sample test means there is only going to be one sample what do you mean by one sample does it mean that if my population is 100 i only will collect data from one person no it is not like that one sample means you will only be having one set of samples okay so the one sample t-test is uh, we call it t-test is a statistical hypothesis test which is used to determine whether say an unknown population's mean will be different from a specific value. We can use this test for continuous data and while we are using this test our data should be a random sample from a normal population. So the population should be normally distributed that is the important point to note over here like for example say we might know that the average birth rate or birth weight for a south indian baby is say three kilograms and we might wish to um, compare the average birth weight of a sample of north indian babies to the average weight of south indian babies that is say three kg then we will go for one sample test okay now there are three types of one sample test uh, it's called kolmogorov smirnov one sample test one sample sign test and t squared test and in that this Kolmogorov's Smirnov Smirno one sample test, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, is used for comparing the distributions on an ordinal scale. Whereas one sample sign test is applicable when sample is taken from a continuous symmetric population and the chi squared test for goodness of fit is used to test whether there is a significant difference existing between the observed number of responses and an expected number based on say null hypothesis in each category or class. So all these type of tests are done for testing of hypothesis which we saw earlier on in the course as the best way to perform any research. Correct. So next we will come to two sample test. So two sample. So one sample is T test whereas two sample is Z test. Okay. Z scores we will use here. Two sample Z test is for um, testing statistical hypothesis which is uh, used to determine if the difference between two population means is not stat statistically significant like for example we have the average birth weight uh, data relating to south indian babies and north indian babies and we are trying to see whether the pop the means of these two populations are not uh, statistically significant or there is no much difference in the means okay that is what we are trying to test over here so for example again uh, if we can use this uh, two sample test to see if there is actually any significant difference in the mean salary of a male or female doctors in India. Okay, such things we can use two sample test. Now we are expected to know about the following two sample tests according to IGNO. Okay, that is the sign test, which is based on the sign of a pair of observations. Median test used to give information on whether two independent samples may belong to the same population, sorry, to populations with the same median or not. And the man with me U test, which is used to test whether the two samples have been drawn from the same population or not. So man with me U test out of all these things, man with me U test I have seen being asked repeatedly in multiple question papers for short notes. So just focus on that when you study as well. Okay, Wilcoxon matched pairs signed rank test is again used to test for a difference in the mean or median of paired observations as well. So we looked at one sample test and two sample test. What if there are more than two samples now? We will go for something called as the K sample test. So here the K sample test is again a statistical procedure which will test the hypothesis which per is performed when more than two samples have to be tested. Like for example say we have multiple sets of patients who are showing several ailments and now if we want to test if all these patients are actually suffering from the same disease having multiple symptoms. Okay, Then we will go for K sample tests. There are two types of K sample tests. One is the um, median test and the other is the kruskal valis test. kruskal valis test I have seen being asked. Median test not so much but things could change drastically when you are going to write the exam. They might ask for a median test. 
we, I cannot be sure about that. But yeah, uh, Kruskal Valis test has been asked previously. So median test is an extension of the median test for two samples. We are just applying it for more than two samples now. Whereas in the Kruskal Valis test, all the elements of different samples will be pooled together and will be ranked with the lowest score receiving a rank of one. Ties are treated in the usual fashion for ranking of data. And if all samples belonging to uh, belong to the same population, uh, then the sum of the ranks of elements of each sample will also be equal. So that is how the kruskal valis test happens. So I know I am sure trying to wrap our heads over these different tests could be quite tiresome to you guys. Definitely boring. Or if you are anything like me, then it might even uh, seem like listening to or reading Chinese when you are studying it for the first time. right? For me, it used to be like that. It, so many concepts, even, you know, even after working with these things for these many... Um, Time, this much time still feels Chinese to me okay so but we will have to learn it at least for the sake of our term and examination we'll have to go through it and learn it mug it up however works for you but we'll have to learn it let me see I I definitely want to make a demo video showing how these different tests are actually performed and all in the industrial setting but uh, for that we will actually have to put in a little more effort outside our MMPC courses so this is something which I'll have to put some more effort into. Maybe after the term and examinations and all are done, maybe we can, I'll try to plan for these kind of things in the upcoming days. Mm, it is something which is currently in, uh, in the process. I'm just uh, researching on how best I can provide those contents to you. It is taking time. Uh, but I hope I can uh, finish designing all this course properly uh, very soon and I can start rolling out recording the classes. Anyway, those things aside, I hope this session was at least uh, good enough to be an icebreaker uh, so that once you go through, um, you know, unit 9 of MMPC 15, you will be much, you will, you will not be seeing these concepts for the first time. That, that at least I want to make sure. Okay. So, thank you so much for tuning into Anu's classroom and until we meet again in the next session, take care. Bye-bye.